Hey, what's going on everybody? DJ Westberg here. Today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and impressions and a general overview of the DMX King Ultra DMX2 Pro coming up. Welcome back everybody. You know, like I said in the intro, I'm going to give you a general overview. My thoughts and impressions on the DMX King Ultra DMX2 Pro. Like I said, I'm not going to get into any specifics. Uh, just more or less my thoughts and impressions and just, uh, you know, basic details about it. To see if it might be something that you might be interested in if you're looking to make the switch from hardware DMX control over to software. Or just don't know a whole lot about the USB interfaces. But uh, hopefully you find this beneficial and it helps you out so let's get into it i started out with an adj operator 384 and to tell you the truth it, it was a nice piece of equipment and i never had any issues with it but being a mobile dj and doing most of the gigs on my own i just found it a little cumbersome and i always had to constantly have a little notepad to tell me which button was what scene or what chase it just got cumbersome trying to manage my controller and the dms controller at the same time so when I started looking at the software and I started doing research to see what was out there for interfaces. And of course, you know, when you start looking at DMX lighting, Chave comes up, Blizzard comes up. And to be honest with you, I wasn't really willing to pull the trigger on, you know, $350, $500 for a USB controller, not knowing if that's something I was going to like in the long term. I was trying to find something on the cheaper end. I started poking around and I came across... The DMX King Micro, which is just basically a USB connector with an XLR connector on the other end with the, all the electronics in the XLR connector. And I started looking at that, and you could pick one of those up at the time of this recording for about $59, which is not a bad deal. And I found a, a couple of reviews out there on it, and it seemed to be a pretty solid interface based on the reviews that I could find. Well, that led me to discovering the Ultra DMX2 Pro. I couldn't really find a whole lot of reviews out there on it to give me an idea if it was worth the money, which at the time of this recording, you can pick it up for about $179, um, which compared to the Chavez and the other interfaces out there, it's a great price. So after much back and forth, I finally decided to pull the trigger and I bought one. So far, I've been using it for quite a while and I can't really say anything bad about it. It's been a great unit. I've never had any issues with light flickers. I've never had any issues with it not communicating with the computer. I've never had any issues with it not communicating with the lights. When I hit blackout, it's instantaneous. There's no lag in it. Um, a few specs on it, like I said, it does have ArtNet and SACM built into it. It's two universe. You can use it one universe or two universe. You can set the ports up, either as inputs or outputs. And also with this unit, you have the ability to record your chases in your scenes on an SD card and there is an SD slot inside this one. You can take a look at that here in a second. And like I said with the optional remote that's what would be used is you'd have the remote, the interface, plug power into it and you can play back all your chases and scenes as a standalone. You don't need a computer or laptop. It's a really great feature in the off chance that you know the laptop or computer that you're using to control the interface happens to take a dump on you just prior to a gig. But you do have that as a backup, so that's a great feature. And before we switch over to take a look at the two utilities, yes I said two, which is kind of a con for me. Hey, they could easily merge the two. Basically you have one utility for when you're using it via USB and the other one for using ArtNet or SACN. I don't know why they set it up that way, but it's not that huge of a deal. But here in a second we'll take a look at that. But First, I'll show you where the SD card goes inside the unit. All right, now we can take a closer look at the interface itself. You know, like I showed you earlier, there's a recap. On one side, you got your two XLR inputs, port A, port B. You got status LEDs here for each port. Um, on the other side, you know, like I showed you earlier, we got a RJ11 connector here for your optional remote for standalone. You got your Ethernet port for ArtNet and SACN. Then you got your just your USB port and then the status LEDs for the Ethernet and the USB port. Now, if you want to use the recording feature and put an SD card in this, I think they 
could come up with something a little bit better than how it's set up now because currently you have to remove a screw on these two sides and remove the cover to gain access to it. It's not a huge deal, but you know, I said easier access by having to tear the unit apart and expose the, the electronics inside would probably be a little bit better. But when you remove the cover, the micro SD card goes right here. Right now there's a Toshiba in here, and I mentioned Toshiba because if you go to DMX King's website, they only recommend using Samsung micro SD cards. That is the only one that they have verified that work with this particular unit. I can tell you right now that Toshiba and I've tried a SanDisk and a PNY and all three of them are not recognized in the software utility is it being installed. So I have not used a feature when I came across that on their website. I figured now oh, what the heck I'll try you know the S micro SD cards that I have and it's a no-go. You know, like I said they're not working. Um, I don't know if that would be a huge deal breaker for somebody if they're looking to get into the recording their scenes and chases but I figured I'd mention that but yeah I can show you that when we jump over to the software utility that there is a Toshiba micro SD card installed right now and when we get in the utility it'll basically show there's no SD card installed so that's pretty much it let's jump over to the software all right here we have the Alter DMX configuration utility version 1.7 at the time of this recording it's the latest version of this utility now this is the utility you'd be using if the interface is plugged in via USB and you do need to download some FTDI drivers and like I said all the stuff I've talked about and the links and stuff will be in the description below um, but yeah from here you know you can't really do a whole lot with this utility but yeah there's one feature I'd like to show you that I've finding valuable especially for us guys that are still using DMX cabling and we haven't went wireless yet is once everything's set up you just go in here select what COM port it was assigned to in the drop down and under the advanced tab under this ultra DMX pro mode standard is basically how it's shipped plugged in via USB you only have one universe you can't use both ports on it but the nice thing about under this drop down menu I'll show you in a second is say you have two separate lighting stands set up say to either side of your booth which is kind of a typical setup with only having one universe you basically have to run one long cable from your interface to one side or the other then run another long cable from that side back to the other side while under here you can use a standard or you can actually select splitter apply it and basically now you're basically splitting the two ports so you can just basically run one cable to the right one to the left and you're done you don't have to run anything back and forth um, you can buy a splitter if you choose to but why go buy a splitter when this one will actually do it for you other than that I have tried to update the firmware in here it doesn't really work I when I did the up the firmware update on this uh, here probably about two weeks ago I actually used the eDMX configuration utility which is the one that you use for ArtNet and SACN which we'll take a look at here in a second all right here we have the eDMX configuration utility version 1.16 at the time of this recording it's the latest version of this utility now this is the eDMX which is for ArtNet and SACN but you also need to use this utility to do your firmware updates because like I said uh, the ultra DMX configuration utility I've tried to do it through there and for some reason I don't know what's going on with it but it doesn't seem to work that great in there but but yeah once you uh, get everything set up on your computer there are some stuff that you need to do to your computer uh, to actually talk to this but at least I'm not getting into the specifics of you know actually configuring stuff and just kind of giving you a general overview of what things look like and what you can and can't do with this stuff but once everything's set up um, it'll go out polling and once it finds your interface you just select it and here it gives you basically all the information about it you know your firmware version and you know the IP address here you can actually set a static IP address which I did because I don't really care for DHCP because depending on how you have your network stuff set up or on your laptop or whatever it can constantly change your IP address and if you go to use it it might be specifically looking 
for whatever you programmed into the interface itself, well, sometimes it doesn't find it. So I just found setting it up as static IP seems to work a lot better. And that's another thing I need to mention. I run semantic endpoint on my computer and I've tried to add this utility to the exceptions list, but it does not, or exemption list, excuse me, but it does not seem to work. You will have to shut off your antivirus, otherwise you won't be able to use this utility. Um, maybe with other antiviruses, uh, it'll work, but I just know with semantics endpoint, no matter what I've tried, it does not work, so I actually have to disable it to get this to actually work. But uh, I just wanted to inform you guys of that. But from here, like I said, now you can go to port A. Um, this is where you can set up your universes. You know, you can make it universe 2, 3, 4, whatever you want to make it. And, it, you know, if I do change, say, this over to 5, you know, it's going to change your ArtNet port address, um, which you'll need to know, you know, when you go to set set the stuff up in whatever software that you're running like i said i use freestyler i have set it up in freestyler it's not that bad it's pretty straightforward um but from here you know port b nothing spectacular it's the same thing you can set your refresh rates uh, this is where you can actually set it up is an artnet in or a sacn in or to set it up as dmx out um set your refresh rate uh yeah, that's pretty much it. But anything you change in here, you do need to click update before it actually updates it in the unit itself. Um, this is where you also set up your record parameters. If you want to record, you know, your scenes and chases to the SD card that I showed you earlier. Um, but this is where you can set up all the parameters for that. Uh, like I said, you do you have to buy the remote that plugs into the rj11 connector to actually use it as a standalone i'm not really sure what the cost of that is but like i said i'll have that information in the descriptions below um but i can show you right now there like earlier in the video there is a toshiba micro sd card in there right now and the system shows or the utility showing that there is no sd card detected um, like I said, I've tried SanDisk and PNY, and all three of them show up as a no SD. Like I said, eventually, maybe I'll try buying a Samsung, putting it in there just to try it out to see if it works. But like I said, for me, it's not a huge deal. But what I have read, um, once you set up all your parameters and stuff, you just open your software that you're using and just start playing, you know, basically hit enable. And once you hit enable, you hit the record button. Then you go into your software, you start playing your chase scene, whatever, you know, your show. And then when you're done, you just hit stop and it's saved to the SD card. And then when you're out somewhere, you can just put power to it, hook your light fixtures to it, and then you're off and going. You know, just play back everything that you recorded. Um, but yeah, like I said, it, it gives you a little more versatility compared to the to using it via USB, but... Like I said, it just all depends on what you want to get out of it. But, yep, pretty much that's about it for the, the utilities. I hope you found this video helpful and it gives you a little more insight into DMX King's product. I just want to let everybody know I am not affiliated with or I'm being paid to promote DMX King's product. I purchased this and I just wanted to share my thoughts and impressions, seeing there's not really a whole lot of information or reviews, specifically on the Ultra DMX2 Pro. Um... So hopefully this gives you a better idea how it compares, you know, if you, you know, through your research, compare, if you want to compare this to a Chauvet or a Blizzard or Sunlight or whatever else is out there. Um, I can say this is very similar to the Entech Pro. And the biggest reason why I decided not to go with the Entech Pro is you have to use an adapter cable. I believe it's like a D15 connector to XLR connector. And I'm not a huge fan of adapter cables, so with this ha actually having XLR connectors on it was probably one of the biggest deciding factors why I wanted to try this over NTEC. But I do, from what I gather, they do have a, a rock solid product also. And if you're really not looking to invest $179 and getting an Ultra DMX2 Pro, like I said, they do offer the Micro at $59. 
and it'd be a great start for somebody you know just starting out with DMX lighting or you know somebody just wants to try it and don't want to spend a lot of money you, my opinion you can't go wrong well, I understand it's the same circuitry and the micros that they use in the pro it's just the pro just gives you a lot more versatility if you found this video helpful please hit the like button and consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button below this way you'll be notified when i upload new content thanks for watching and until the next time keep the tracks thumping